get what I'm saying? This is why we say that slavery, and this may be my most controversial point, especially with those who are maybe unstable and unlearned, to say that slavery was good for us. Slavery was good for our ancestors. It was good for us that slavery happened. Now people say, why you don't say this? You see what they did to us white folks? You, you see, because we're, we're in this black and white checkerboard kind of construct right now where most people are just looking at recent history and don't really have a, a clear idea of history. You understand? What we're Ezekiel 37, 1 through 5. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. The scriptures also proclaim in Deuteronomy 29.1, These are the words of the covenant, which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Exodus 19, 5 through 8. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Daniel 9.11 Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Hosea 4.6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. John R. Moore wrote, Understanding biblical prophecy and black history can set the record straight, where certain myths can be corrected in terms of showing that black people were never cursed because of their black skin, as promoted by the slave masters and other supremacists. Neither were they a genetically inferior race. The curses placed on Israel will help to identify who the real Hebrew Israelites are. The majority of biblical readers, including the black population, who were led to believe that all of their misfortunes were as a result of being an inferior race, have never recognized or understood these curses. This lie caused many black people to become ashamed of their history and ancestry, thereby cutting off their direct link to the Most High. All of the following curses were unleashed on the children of Israel and not on mankind in general, because it was with Israel's forefathers that the covenant was made. Leviticus 26, 14 through 26 outlines the curses that would be heaped upon Israel because of its disobedience. Romans 11, 8. According as it is written, Yah hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Since black people suffer from an identity crisis, Isaiah 1, 3, they are not aware of their true identity as Israelites, the special relationship they share with Yah, or what sins they have committed against Yah. For this reason, they are unable to confess these sins while continuing to go against Yah's laws. Black Israelites in general do not understand why so much misfortune is befalling them, and this makes it difficult to comprehend the severity of the punishments confronting them. Leviticus 26, 14 through 15. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, 
I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. The enemy of true Israel has slaughtered black people for centuries. Historical slave records estimate that over 100 million black men, women, and children perished during the Middle Passage on their way to the Western Hemisphere. In fact, so many dead and dying black Hebrews were thrown overboard that sharks often followed the slave ships. The survivors who arrived in the Americas had to dodge being burnt alive, lynched, tortured, murdered, mutilated, and dehumanized, activities that continued long after legal slavery was over. Leviticus 26:36, And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. And they shall fall upon one another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. About 30% of America's founding fathers owned over 1,300 slaves. Slaves were also owned by 11 of 16 United States presidents during the time of slavery. As pointed out in the scriptures, those which hate you shall rule over you was clearly seen in those who formed the government of the United States, as they could not contain their intense hatred of the children of Yah. Even the Declaration of Independence did not address the slave trade, slavery, or the plantation system. So the assurance that all men are created equal did not apply to the slaves. Joel 3, 3 through 6. And they have cast lots for my people, and given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. The word Jesus came from a Greek word, Jesus, and the Greek word Jesus was a Greek deity. And um, the word, as a matter of fact, the, the letter J was never in the original Hebrew language, nor the Greek language. J was never there. The, even today, the Hebrew alphabet has no J. The Greek alphabet has no J. The J was the last letter that was introduced into the English language lay, late in the 1500s. And the J letter came because a Catholic monk by the name of Galilitos was experimenting with the eye and put the hook on the bottom of the eye and made it a J. And that's how the J letter came into the English language. So his name was never Jesus. His, his name was and is Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh says and if we remember even in 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 the in the Gospels when when Matthew and Mark uh, talk about the angel visiting Mary and, and and her real name was not Mary that's the English word but her true name is Miriam and that's the Hebrew word um, when the angel appeared to her he distinctly said you will have a son his name shall be called Yahushua, meaning Yahweh saves, because he continued by saying, he shall save his people from their sins. So his name tells who he is. Revelation 2, 9 through 10. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say that they are Israel and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you, true Israel. 
Obadiah Yisrael of the Hebrew Israelites in Chicago points out that one of the facts scriptures gives us about Israel in regard to their physical appearance is that Israel is described as physically looking like the sons of Ham in appearance. Ham was one of Noah's three sons. Shem and Japheth were the other two. Noah's descendants repopulated the earth after the great flood. Ham's descendants are traced to the families of Africa. Ham, Quam in Hebrew means black, hot, and burnt. Ham had four sons. Cush, Ethiopians, Cushites, and... Now the truth has overcome the lies, the good news of His Majesty in His Christ. And it is vital that we raise our tribal flag, the flag of the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda. Find some jewels.